Hello, welcome back to the Daily DH Update. Today we're going to take a quick look at some interesting stuff. We're going to look at some trending ads that were online today. We're also going to look at omni-channel marketing. If a lot of you don't know what omni-channel marketing is, it's probably the, the best single thing you can do for your business if you're on that next level. You know, maybe maybe not for the smaller businesses, but there's still a way you can get into it as a small business on a different different kind of scale. Um, the first thing I, I want to talk about today is something that I saw online. It's not a good ad, it's a bad ad, okay? What it is, is I was looking around on YouTube and I saw an ad cross my page. And it was an ad of, uh, I believe it was, um, I forgot the name of the individual. But what they were doing was they were creating Google business listings. Then they would rank the Google business listings. And then they would rent the Google business listings to other businesses so that they could generate leads. The, the big, big, big problem with this, first of all, I mean, the obvious problem is if the business doesn't have a physical location, it's not going to stay on Google Maps permanently. So if you're paying for ad dollars by renting this out for a month, you, you might as well just be throwing your money away because it could go down the next day. The other thing is, how is this going to affect you? You know, are they going to change the phone number on the Google listing and make it your company phone number? If so, is that going to mess up your nap information is it gonna make it so that you're not showing up correctly on the web i mean think think about the it's almost false advertisement you know if i if i get an ad or a google listing and i, I rank it number one through like you know good seo filling everything out getting it all done getting some reviews on it all of that and i get it to rank up there now my Google listing's number one in Orange County, California for financing. And then I go to a financing company and I tell him that I want to rent out the listing so that he can use it and all the phone numbers that come from it will be his. Well, it's not going to say like, you know, da 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 financing company. The listing's original name is going to be there without their pictures, without their Facebook connections, without anything like that. And it's not going to rank that well if it's not citation correct. If, if it doesn't have its NAP information, the directories filled out in social media, it's not even going to rank well. So by the time they get it to rank, Google's probably going to notice it by that time and tear the motherfucker down. You know, anyway, I, I just a forewarning, uh, I hope nobody gets involved in this renting of Google business listings it will only have a bad effect on your customers. It may be a total loss in marketing. And the worst effect that it could have, Google could see it and it could mess up your SEO. Or, or maybe Google sees the listings and they think they're duplicate listings. In which case, they take your listing and theirs down. Now what are you going to do? That's definitely something I want people to be aware of. Uh, another thing, on to some ads that were trending today there's definitely some very interesting ads now you know some of these might not be specifically tuned towards marketing but take what you will out of them the number one trending ad today was the nancy trump ice cream ad uh, in this ad you know he, obviously donald trump makes a hard play at nancy and pretty much downplays her you know, and, and, and what, what he's doing is he's using like almost like circular reasoning where he's not really talking about Nancy. You know, he's just downplaying her moral standings. Now, the brilliance behind the ad, of course, is that they got so many people frustrated with the ad that it was viewed more than any any ad in the United States today. Um you know, in the math on this, I mean, it, you know, one one of the best marketers of our time right now is got to be the Donald Trump team. I mean, these guys are shooting him out everywhere. You you can't turn on the web, a Facebook, computer, Twitter without seeing this guy all over the web. 
And how does this ad really benefit Donald Trump? You know, it, it was a very negative ad. People didn't like it. You know, it's not like you would think people are going to vote for Donald Trump because of this ad. But here's how it benefits him. Really easy way to explain it, right? If I make an ad and it is obnoxious, obnoxious enough to where people want to see it, to see how obnoxious it was, Donald Trump's going to get, say, 100,000 views. And maybe 50% of those people are going to be like, oh, I disagree with the ad. It is bullshit. I'm not voting for him. The other 50% are going to like the ad. Now, if Pelosi tries to do the same thing and makes a good ad, well, her ad's not going to get nearly as many views because it's not as popular. It's not as eye-catching. It's not, it's not in the public's face, so to speak. So see, she gets like 10,000 views on her ad, but... You know, 100% of them are voters for her. That's great. She's, she's That's great. But she only got 10,000. Whereas Donald Trump could get almost, you know, a million or 27 million views on his ad. And 50% of them don't like him. But the fear, sheer the sheer amount of numbers that he's getting in front of on a daily basis. I can almost guarantee you Donald Trump is going to get another four years. No other candidate has a marketing system like Donald Trump. And one of the things that he uses is obviously omni-marketing. You know, I mean, he he's in every single thing you can think of, every single facet. And he puts himself as the front runner of the business, very much like uh, Gary Vanderchuk does, right? Um, omni-marketing is the focus of what I'm talking about today. You know, some good examples of omni-marketing, I would have to say... Number one is Disney. Uh, Disney has probably the best omni marketing strategy in the world. You know, next to like companies like Bank of America or Starbucks, for example. Um, if you were to take a good, you know, in depth look, Disney gets omni channel experience down to the smallest details. It starts with uh, an initial experience on the entertainment giant beautiful mobile responsive website and after you get into the website you'll get a plethora of different types of applications services all of them bouncing you back to one another with customer interaction and ai interaction and this can be experienced on any platform they have be it like a, a mobile tablet or you know just a regular old pc even its trip planning website works well on mobile. That alone is, is something you don't see very often. A lot of trip planning sites just don't work that well. So, you know, hats off to them on that. Um, another really, really good one would be like Virgin Atlantic. Uh, Robert Franzgard shared an account of his amazing experience with Virgin Atlantic's omni-channel customer service experience. Um, definitely, you know, one of the biggest benefits to omni-channel marketing is that your customer interaction is going to go through the roof. You know, if, you're, if your customer gets an, uh, on the website and then they get on the app, right? And now they're being directed over to the YouTube channel. Now they're being redirected from the YouTube channel back to the website to make a purchase, you know, things like that. And at the same time, you have your customer assistants reaching out to them or like an AI assistant that's hitting them up as they're on the website you know, or, or, or through whatever channel, or maybe you have it connected to all channels, you know, it's amazing, you have to be, you can't, you can't do it anymore on one channel, okay, maybe like back in the day, you could get on Facebook or Instagram, and that could be your one channel, and you get, you know, you get your views on that, and your business takes off, as of right now, you need to be on every single channel, it is a base function, if you are just focusing on one Think about it like this, right? Like, like, like Neil Patel said, right? If you uh, have all your money in Facebook and then you diversify and take like, you know, 20% of your budget and put it into other different forms of marketing, well, the, the per click cost of those forms of marketing compared to like Google and Facebook is dramatically lower. But the view from those, the amount of views you get is a lot higher, the amount of clicks per cost you get. So your marketing dollars, as you spend them, your cost per click is going to go down if you focus your omni-channels correctly so that you're 
diversifying your budget through different channels, but at the same time getting the same amount of clicks. It, it's not that hard to do. Uh, another really good example of omni-channel marketing is Bank of America. You know, we all a lot of us use Bank of America. Uh, you could go on to Bank of America, and as one of the biggest brands in the industry, they, they set the standard for dynamic experiences. Um, almost allows for everything from check deposits to appointment scheduling handled by the company's mobile desktop app. And then they also will do such things like paying your monthly bills or depositing checks. Uh, they're not like 100% there yet. They're not like on Disney's standpoint. You, you can't really go onto the mobile app and try to get a business loan through Bank of America. You can't do things like that, too complicated things, but, but they're getting there. Uh, one of the other ads that I thought was very, very interesting, one of the, one of the most trending searches on Google Trends today was Foodland ad. Now, now a good example of how omni marketing, omni channel marketing should work, right? I went online, I looked up the food ad, and sure enough, you know, it's just like just like you would expect, COVID-19, everybody's cooking from home, everybody wants to be the new chef of the house, so to speak, right? Now, now here's the problem though. I, I see that Foodland is getting all these views. It's great. There's lots of attention. Their YouTube channel looks great. I'm on my smartphone, I click on their mobile website, and it is dog shit. The letters are everywhere, the mobile website is obviously not set up to function well at all. It's literally, it's not conforming, and the numbers and letters are everywhere on there. You think for a huge organization like the, the, the Foodland, they would have noticed this problem. So, you know, as a recap for today, uh, definitely go take a closer look at your marketing. See what you're not using, you know, and, and make, maybe make a system like I have, you know, where like pretty much it's just I, I'll make a post and I'll make a good video and then I'll submit that to every single channel that I have, you know, and that's my daily routine. Make it a routine because if you're not making it a routine, I'll tell you one thing that, you know, they said earlier today that we could have another huge outbreak of COVID-19 in winter. Winter's a long ways away. Nobody's going to be getting foot traffic or anything like that till winter. And who knows how long? Who knows? There might never be the same marketing out there for physical advertisement and restaurants. You have to, you have to evolve to the world. If you're not you're just going to get left behind and your business is going to fucking fail. So this is the daily update from DH Strategies. Hope you guys are having a good day. Make sure to like the video. Like the video at the bottom. Subscribe. Things will get better. Don't worry. I'll get a green screen and all that too. Until then, you guys have a good day and enjoy yourselves.